What happens to food after we eat it? This is about how the food we eat travels from our mouth into our stomach, down to our intestine, gets processed, absorbed, and eventually eliminated. The food we eat travels from our mouth to our stomach where it is processed, absorbed, and eventually eliminated, and this whole process is known as the digestive system. The human digestive system is very complex and has evolved over millions of years. It consists of the rectum, the large intestine, the small intestine, the pancreas, the stomach, and the liver with the gallbladder. The esophagus is also part of this system as well as various salivary glands near the mouth. In this video, we are going to explain how the food travels through our digestive tract and gets digested and absorbed. Without any further delays, let's jump right into it. First, the food is broken up in the mouth by the teeth, and then mixed with saliva with the help of the salivary glands. Saliva contains a digestive enzyme called amylase that already begins to digest carbohydrates in the mouth. It splits carbohydrates into smaller units. The ball-like mixture of food with saliva, also known as bolus, is pushed into the throat by the tongue and finally into the esophagus which propels the bolus to the stomach. The esophageal lumen that is the opening inside the esophagus is very flexible which allows boluses of different sizes to be transported. The esophagus consists of several layers. These layers occur throughout the entire digestive tract. The two outer muscle layers are responsible for peristalsis. Through these two muscles, the bolus can be transported from the mouth to the stomach, even if the person is standing on his or her head. The stomach is often divided into six areas. The stomach is composed of a similar structure to the esophagus. It has a longitudinal muscle layer on the outside. Underneath we can find circular muscle fibers. In addition to this, there is an oblique muscle layer overlaying the mucosa. On the inside, some rugi allow the stomach to enlarge who the food is consumed. The stomach wall contains the gastric glands. They produce mucus which can protect the stomach wall from the secreted gastric acid. Gastric acid is produced by simply smelling or seeing food, but also spices, and the stretching of the stomach causes the secretion. That is the release of gastric acid. About 1 to 2 liters of gastric juice are produced per day. Since the esophagus does not have a protective mucus layer, stomach and esophagus are separated by a sphincter. It relaxes when a bolus is pushed from the esophagus into the stomach and contracts to prevent acid and food from going back up. Gastric juice consists among other things hydrochloric acid, the enzymes pepsin, the intrinsic factor, and lipase for the digestion of fats. In addition to nutrients, food also contains bacteria that can damage the body. The components of hydrochloric acid can destroy harmful bacteria. In addition, hydrochloric acid converts pepsinogen also released by the gastric glands into pepsin. Pepsin can break down the protein in the stomach. For vitamin B12 absorption in the small intestine, the intrinsic factor is needed, which is produced by the gastric glands. The vitamin must combine with an intrinsic factor, then it can be absorbed later by the small intestine. Vitamin B12 helps keep the body nerves and blood cells healthy and helps make DNA. It also contains gastric lipase, an acid-resistant enzyme for fat digestion. In the stomach, gastric lipase splits a triglyceride into a free fatty acid and a diglyceride where only the free fatty acid can be absorbed by the body. More effective fat digestion takes place in the small intestine. Through gastric juice and stomach movements which take place approximately every 20 seconds, the individual boluses are mixed into a semi-fluid mass of partly digested food though so-called chyme. The chyme cannot enter the duodenum at first because there is a sphincter at the stomach exit. The pyloric sphincter resembles the esophageal sphincter. The pyloric sphincter opens only a few millimeters so that larger pieces remain inside the stomach. In the first section of the small intestine, the duodenum bile and pancreatic secretions are mixed with the chyme via the ampulla of fata. Pancreatic juice contains numerous digestive proenzymes and enzymes. For these to do their job, a higher pH value than that in the stomach is necessary. For this reason, pancreatic juice contains sodium hydrogen carbonate. 
Hydrogen carbonate is able to neutralize the acid in the chyme and thus produce the optimum pH value of 7 or 8. Pancreatic juice also contains proenzymes. It is only through enterokinase released by the duodenum wall that the proenzyme trypsinogen becomes trypsin which can split protein and activate another trypsinogen. We also found alpha analyses, which we had already found in the mouth. It now does the rest regarding the splitting of carbohydrates which it converts into maltose and isomaltose. Bile is produced by the liver cells and transported to the gallbladder. The bile is stored in the gallbladder and finally added to the food in the duodenum via the ampulla of the water. The pancreas also releases juice via the ampulla of the fada. The small intestine consists of three sections, duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. The ileum continues into the large intestine in the right lower abdomen. The duodenum and the jejunum have circular folds to increase the contact surface with the food. These circular folds extend about centimeters into the lumen of the small intestine. These folds are covered with small finger-like projections called villi. Villi increase the surface considerably. Villi are about one millimeter long. Each villus contains blood capillaries and a lymphatic capillary called a lacteal. Some special nutrients are absorbed by the villus and transferred to the blood capillaries. Some nutrients such as glucose do not require a carrier because they are transported freely in the bloodstream. While other nutrients such as iron require transport proteins like transferrin. Fats are transported by chylomicrons which are lipoproteins. The triglycerides to be transported are virtually enclosed in the lipoprotein. Chylomicrons and triglycerides are then transported through the lacteal of the villus. The microvilli absorb nutrients and transport them to the inside. The last part of the small intestine is the ileum. It does not have, unlike the duodenum and jejunum, circular folds. The ileum absorbs electrolytes such as calcium for building bones, hair, and teeth. Trace elements such as zinc for sperm production and the immune system, vitamins such as B12 for the formation and maturation of red blood cells, and remaining bile acid which is transported back to the liver via the bloodstream. The large intestine is thicker than the small intestine. It is about 1 meter long and surrounds the small intestine which is connected to the large intestine via the Bohine's valve. Through peristalsis, the chyme is transported from the ascending colon to the transverse colon to the descending colon, and the remaining waste is excreted through the anus. So here, we have described all about how the food we eat travels from our mouth, gets processed, absorbed, and eventually eliminated. Moreover, if you think we have missed something important, you can mention that below in the comment section. That's it for today's video. If you liked what you saw, make sure to give us a big thumbs up and also, subscribe to our channel. Till our next video, stay safe and healthy.